Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It Dawn. Let's check out the Koetakana Expanse. The deeper you travel into the island's southwestern wilds, the denser the jungle becomes. The air thickens, heavy with humidity, and the impenetrable canopy allows only the faintest light from the sky above. The path narrows into gloom before you, the persistent drone of insects subsiding into soft whispers on the edge of hearing. A twig snaps in the distance. You hear that? Constantine asks. Silence falls. The dwarf hugs his arm around himself and frowns. He's made the gosh darn creeps. Enter the forest. Tendrils of gray fog creep across the roots and vines, slowly rising, reaching, as you push further into the island's expanse. The air grows opaque, and quiet murmurs carry on the faint breeze. Just as it reaches its thickest, the foggy morass parts like a curtain, revealing again the path before you. It forces to the left and the right, each path looking roughly as passable as the other. Inspect the paths. The paths to either side seem uncannily similar, almost symmetrical, as if a pane of glass runs between them, one the reflection of the other. The trees bend above like long, many-jointed legs, and their limbs entwine with vines into an impe impermeable tangle. Take the left trail. You follow the trail, and quiet rustling sounds murmur from the obscurity of the undergrowth. The path forks again before you. Between the two paths you find a simple statue, a stone pedestal topped with the many-eyed face of the Seeker. Examine the statue. The statue has clearly been standing at this fork for ages, the lines weathered, the details worn away by the elements. Moss grows across the base, and vines hang down from the spider-like head. The Seeker's eyes stare at you, unblinking. Yet everything about the sculpture, down to the draping foliage, seems impossibly symmetrical. Everything except the one eye missing from the statue's left side. Interpret the statue's meaning. The Seeker is rendered with an eye missing, or perhaps the eye had, has been removed since, uh, the statue defaced by some other contestant in the island's games. Constantine examines the figure. Strange, isn't it? The Seeker being presented as blinded. Partially so, anyway. Maybe the Seeker's coat respects the blind any more than the Slayer's the feeble. Take the left trail. As you press deeper into the jungle, the path narrows as if the trees are looming ever nearer, threatening. They seem almost displeased with you. The sorceress whispers in the woods grow, sounding less like insects and more like the chittering of some unseen audience. A rush of shifting leaves above serves as the only warning you get before the massive, bulbous form of a giant spider descends from the canopy. With impossible quickness, its legs wrap around Jody before the beast ascends again into the shadowy recesses above. Jody's shouts go abruptly silent. Think it wanted a friend? Adair asks. No? Then we should probably see to finding Jody. The path broadens and splits before you, and possibly returning you to a very familiar fork. Examine the statue again. Okay, I'll take the right path this time. So, I think it was hinted that we should take the path that's represented by the eye. Because it compared the blind to the feeble uh, for the seeker and then the slayer, respectively. But, let's do it this way. As you press deeper into the jungle, the path narrows as if the trees were looming ever nearer. Okay, same description as before. This time it grabbed Aloth, so we'll take the eyeball paths going forward. So we'll go left this time. 
The jungle grows darker as you press ever more deeply into its heart. The path forks again before you, and while the split looks slightly similar to the last, you can tell it bears enough differences to suggest you're making progress. It's the same statue as before. Alright, we'll take the left path this time. Oh, nope, shoot, wrong one. Sorry, Adair. Alright, take the left trail. Take the right trail. Shoot, I didn't look at the... I didn't look at the statue that time. Okay. Left. Here we go. Uh, the jungle grows darker as you press ever more deeply into its heart. The path forks again before you, while the split looks slightly similar to the last. You can tell it bears enough differences to suggest you're making progress. Alright, take the right. Take the left. You continue into the growing gloom. To every side grow gargantuan trees, their upper branches disappearing into the darkness above, and the path winds among their bases, each as broad as a castle's turret. The path separates again, but this time there's no plinth and no bust of the Seeker. Instead you find a third path, central, between two others. While the paths to either side appear almost reflections of one another, the central path looks cramped and overgrown. It descends into a dark cave. Take the center trail. You enter the cave, making your way through the winding darkness. For a time, you hear nothing save your own breathing, but then the whisper of insects draws you forward, growing gradually until it is, almost sets the air to humming. The cave disgorges you into the jungle, though the darkness is so deep, you do not at first realize you've emerged. The chittering of mandibles and movement of heavy, many-jointed limbs echo above and around you. Search for enemies. You see nothing to attack, nothing likely to attack you. Continue cautiously forward. The path broadens before abruptly terminating in a broad, open clearing. For a moment, it seems as if the jungle itself is aglow, each tree limbed in faint green, but then you see the source of the illumination, a skull almost afire with soul energy. You get no chance to retrieve it, however, as spiders descend upon you from the darkness above. And I'm all by my lonesome. That's okay. Like trouble. Because everyone else showed up anyway. What do you mean? That's not very helpful. Hmm? Stay behind me. There's something I can do. Yeah. 
That dog won't hunt. Asses. Let's go. Hmm? Huh? I'm good and Lisa stuck. I... Your end. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. All right, finish this spider off. Yeah. Go again? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Man, that's just rude. A little more quickly would be great. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can. I hear you. Oh, stop this instead. What now? I light the darkness. Finally. Down. It's Maru. Yeah. Great. Even more. <laughs> of course there is. He's immobilized anyway. Might as well have him summon Muatu. Happy to oblige. Get through. Looks like Muatu did upgrade. I think he's only two skulls. Last time we summoned him, and then we channeled the soul essence into him after we became a contestant in the crucible i'm slowly dying of poison happy to oblige mm -hmm. yeah yeah need something only goes a lot love will be on the <laughs> sink hey i cannot whack him yeah. I feel <laughs> What now? Mo Take him down. Yeah. That's not very helpful. <laughs> not even close. Harder than I expected spiders to be. That's also not done. I don't think I can pull that off. Do I look a little weird? What do you mean? Yeah. No can do. Happy 
happy to oblige. Let's, Let's reap this whirlwind. <laughs> the good news is the spiders don't like fire, and we have a lot of fire. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, and the wake's wand has been upgraded. Now, legendary and revelating missiles. 50% chance on scoring crit to leave a seal that deals raw damage to enemies. Deal 500 raw damage and we'll get the next upgrade. Alright, so I think it's the next three verses. Speak nothing of Wake Helder, for she was entrusted with her father's work. Hear nothing of Wake Helder, the first touched by the hundred visions. Hear nothing of Wake Helder, who plucked truth from dreams and made lies of the w waking world. Hear nothing of Wake Helder, entrusted by her father to bend the dead fire without being bent. Hear nothing of Wake Helder, lest she hear something of you. Mm -hmm. I've got it. Sure thing. The soul shimmer is before you, her faint glow unreflected by the trees. Glowing gossamer silks sheathe her form, and long black tendrils of hair crown her head. Do you see her too? My blade? It has found me once again. An ephemeral hand reaches out to Maruk's Amonth to grasp the ancient dagger, but the soul stops short. Is that the dagger that does fire damage that my paladin has in his personal inventory? The crucible still serves its purpose, bringing Galloway's devoted to battle, bringing battle to Galloway's devoted. But a wound, a tear, festers in the heart of this place. Who are you? I ask you to risk life and limb in the crucible, but. The desired outcome is not your death. The future of this place depends upon you seeking the champion's crown. The souls that prowl this island writhe in disharmony. Without your help, the... The image falls silent as the woman's form loses definition. In the span of a breath, the apparition dissipates entirely, her words unfinished. Oh, where'd she go? Hello, spirit lady! Any idea who that was? Not a clue. Perhaps she was the seeking face. Or perhaps some other poor soul trapped here on Kazuari. Do you sense the turmoil she spoke of? Not really, but I don't feel trapped here. Exactly. Not like she does. I came willingly, after all. Died willingly, I mean. And I've got you, right? Let's go. Perhaps if we complete the other trials, we'll find similar spirits. And hopefully they'll be a touch more cheerful. Happy to oblige. Oh, we got the Sot Skull. The skull, pregnant with soul stuff, rests heavy in your grasp. You do not know whether it is the item that brought past Seekers to the forest, or merely the remains of one Seeker who never made it out again. Yeah, it is this one. Interesting. Right, let's check out Tebe O Waipu.
A long arid expanse stretches before you, bordered on either side by dry, jagged cliffs. A handful of sharp leaf trees and scraggly shrubs share the landscape, but the miles are otherwise desolate. In the darkening distance, you make out a faint red glow high among the stony promontories. Thoughts? What do I think? You wonder what you think. Well, then you can answer that. <laughs> Adair? Adair frowns down the length of the gorge. Not looking forward to it. The only way we're getting to the end of this valley is through it. Constantine? Constantine peers into the valley and frowns. Looks like a lonely place to die. Jody? Surely this is a test from the gods. Fine. I'll prove my devotion and my endurance any time. And Aloth. Aloth sighs. You're really asking. I just assumed we didn't. But you're not really asking, are you? Use Spyglass. You set your Spyglass southwards, towards the distant peaks. Through the lenses, you see no reddish light at all. You lower the instrument, and the strange illumination reappears. Perhaps it's a natural illusion, some trick of the atmosphere. Press further into the valley. You pick your way among the dry stones and thorny brush. You swipe at stinging insects and scare off hissing lizards. The land itself seems set against you. The valley narrows for a time to the point where only two kith can walk abreast. You approach an ancient structure of stacked stones. The stones appear precarious. Send someone else ahead. I don't think blasting it apart is the right call. Could be wrong. The island shudders, and the rocks fall from the wall. Donald manages to ward them off without difficulty. Your compatriot frowns at you in size. Ah, you still with me? Okay. Uh, check on the glow. You've made some progress down the valley. The light still seems distant. Adair? Adair frowns, working at a bandage with dirty fingers. I live yet. At least we're getting closer to the end of this place. Constantine? Yeah, doing swell. Constantine wipes sweat from his brow and grimaces. Hands on her hips, panning. Jody shakes her head. It didn't matter if I had scrapes, bruises, or bones poking out of my skin. Uncle Ingbert always told me the same darn thing. Walk it off. So don't you worry about me. I'll keep on going, right up until I'm dead. And Aloth. Aloth frowns peevishly. That depends. Is there a purpose to this trek? And more importantly, a cool glass of palm wine and a long warm soak at the end of it. Press further into the valley. You continue on, forging ahead against the hostile environment. As you make your way forward, the pebbled earth shifts out from under you, plunging you into a hidden crevasse. Jody grabs you and hauls you back up to solid ground. Jody brushes the dirt from you before you continue on. Check on the glow. You travel quite far into the valley. It seems to stretch as far behind you as it does ahead. Alright, same thing as before. Adair? Alright, everybody else is doing great. Press further into the valley. I'm assuming they can take injuries as you go on, and their responses will change depending on how much of a beating they take. You continue on, forging ahead against the hostile environment. A wide crevasse opens before you, spanned by a line of old rope. Shimmy across the rope. Can't choose him. You shimmy across the gorge without difficulty. Check on the glow. The end of the valley doesn't seem like it can be far now. Okay, press further into the valley. Same description. 
A boulder blocks the path, and you have to push it out of the way. You succeed, but as it rolls aside, it crushes Jody's hands. Cradling hands to chest, Jody begins to lag behind. So we can't select her anymore. That's lame, she didn't have a check for that. Alright, check on the glow. The end of the valley doesn't seem like it can be far now. Press further into the valley. Same description. Darkness falls as you continue deeper into the valley. Footing seems even more treacherous in the gloom. And soon enough, Adair slips and falls, head knocking hard against the stone ground. You help your companion up, only to be waved off. I'm fine, but Adair's progress is noticeably slowed. I'm not going to keep uh, checking on my companions because they keep saying the same thing. Check on the glow. Same description as before. Press further into the valley. And once again, same description. You find the valley beyond, partitioned off by a veritable wall of dry bambles. Yeah, burn them. Breath of Flames. I keep calling it Fan of Flames. Oh wait. I think we do have Fan of Flames. Breath of Flames is the item ability that I have. Your blaze clears the plants ahead of you, but not without one of the flaming branches falling upon you, of course. Check on the glow. Same description. I think we're finally almost there. How are you holding out? Alright, same description as before. Uh, press further into the valley. As you push further towards your goal, what initially seems like a heavy blush of exertion across Alos' face grows into an increasingly weeping rash of broken sores. I don't think anyone knows alchemy. Concoct a salve. Yeah. There are enough herbs available in this hard scrabble canyon to create a reasonable treatment. But what about our inventory? Aloth waves it off as unpleasant, but ultimately bearable. We can actually talk to him though. Uh, check on the glow. Alright, Aloth frowns P. Uh, same description. Press further. Sweat soaked and utterly exhausted, Aloth begins to lag behind, muttering quietly about putting one foot behind. Sorry, behind. Before the other. Alright, press further. As you trudge along the valley floor, the sun beats down on your party blistering Constantine's skin. You notice your companion begin to slow behind you. So maybe, because it seems like it's forcing all of our companions to get injured here, I wonder if all of them had to be abducted by spiders in the last one as well. I right, press further. When you finally reach the end of the valley, it almost comes as a surprise. The cliffs loom above you, crowned by their faint red illumination. Or perhaps that's simply the glow of the setting sun. Check on your group. Though the remainder of your party lags some ways behind, they're more or less keeping pace. I don't think we've seen a constitution check yet, have we? It's always been athletics. I throw a grappling hook up. You lob a grappling hook up the side of the cliff, securing it around a tree growing out of the rock face above. Climb the rope. After the ordeal that lies behind, the climb up the rock face seems almost relaxing. You're alone at the top of the promontory, and you hear something moving around a nearby rock. Await the remainder of your party. You resolve not to press on alone, but the rest of the party makes little headway as the sound gets ever nearer. 
The red glow grows as its source comes into view. A necklace crafted from a shard of Vermilion Adra. The necklace hangs from the tusk of one of the largest boars you've ever seen. That is a big boar. The large boar, its quills bristling, snorts and stamps its hoof. That's... that's a big pig. The beast is taller than you are, and much heavier, all muscle, bone, and tusk. Uh, here, piggy, piggy, piggy. The boar's eyes narrow as it snorts. You've never seen an expression of greater incredulity on a boar. It stamps on the ground. You look hungry, fella. Here, maybe I have something you can eat. Its head tilts to the side slightly, ears twitching, its snout a quiver, and it cautiously hoofs towards you. Oh goodness, really? A uh, feed boar Orland's Cradle. You like Orland's Cradle? Everybody likes Orland's Cradle. The boar sniffs at the mushrooms, then eats them out of your hand. Despite its size, the animal is surprisingly gentle. It sniffs at you as if seeking more. Uh, pet the boar. The boar cringes slightly as you move to scratch it behind the ear, but as you pet it, it relaxes, pressing its head into your palm, softly nuzzling at your belly. Take the necklace from the boar's tusk. The boar blinks quizzically as you remove the necklace from its tusk. It'd be cool if you could recruit that as an animal companion, even as a class that doesn't have animal companions typically. Or even put it in your pet slot, but it, instead of just giving you a pet with small bonuses, it gives you a full-on animal companion. Now we got the Crimson Crystal. Leather Band secure this piece of corrupted Audra to its cord. Notably, the accessory makes no use of copper. The wispy, shimmering form of an Amoa approaches you cautiously, the posture crouched and wary. Numerous scars and burns dot the soul's lanky limbs, but their face is a diffuse of, uh, sorry, is a diffuse blur, devoid of defined cheekbones and jaws. An Amoa soul. Do you see him? Or her? Them? Fool that may live. The figure gesticulates as if to speak, but only distorted fragments reach your senses. Are you asking for this relic? No. Its memories must join the crucible. Learn from that relic. Grow as hard as it. That you may live to restore the crucible. The figure lurches forward, its posture urgently pleading. But no words are spoken, and the form dissipates into nothing. Well... <clears throat> that happened. He coughs. Any idea who that was? Hard to say. The surviving face, perhaps, or a soul connected to it. Were you able to understand it any better than I was? I speak spirit, not crazy. It's like it was reaching out from somewhere far away. Let's go. I'll bet we learn more by completing the trials. But we'll see.
Okay, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, next time, we'll check out the burial site and Wakupoko Lowveld. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.